Hi Erin, today is Wednesday, August 24th. Today I am going to tell you about a couple of my favorite books from when I was little. I always love to read and these are a couple of the books that I read and reread and still think about all the time. The first and probably most significant is The Tower of Gaborah by John White. Now, when I try to tell people about this book, I'm typically met with the response, so it's like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I have to be like, well, yes, except I love it, and it's better. I know I read the Narnia books as a kid, but they never really stuck with me, and the couple that I've reread recently as the movies came out got the same reaction. They felt like more like storylines. Like, we never really saw the epic battles, but we knew that they happened, and the girls weren't really allowed to be part of the fighting. And I know we've talked about this, but they grew up. And then they came back. And they had to grow up again, except without talking animals and being royalty. And how scarring and awful would that be? Anyway, The Tower of Savora is about a sister, Lisa, and two brothers, Kurt and Wesley, who go through to the land of Anthesos via TV screen. The sister goes through one screen and the brothers go through another, so they end up in different places and have to meet up. And the younger brother has some issues being tempted by the evil side, and there's Gaul the Conqueror as the Jesus allegory, and there's battles and awesomeness and magic, and you can see where people think it sounds like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But as you may notice, it is longer. Which might be why it doesn't give me that feels like an outline thing that I get from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It feels more developed, and I care more about the characters, and maybe I didn't get into Narnia just because I read the Archives of Anthropos first. I don't know, but I really, really love this book so much. Just to give you an idea of how much this book shaped me as a person, blue is my favorite color. Because in this book, blue light represents good. There's this scene where Lisa is walking down a tunnel after she narrowly escapes being offered as a human sacrifice, and it's lit by blue lights up on the wall. And there's three other tunnels that she comes to while she's walking. One is lit by red, one by purple, and one by green. The red tunnel has a giant spider disguised as an old woman who wants to trap her in its web and eat her. The purple tunnel has yummy bread that plunges her into darkness whenever she tries to cut it. And the green tunnel is nothing special to look at, but offers an uh, alternative to the blue tunnel, which is about to cross a giant chasm, but is the real way out. And as she walks along, Lisa makes up a song that she sings to herself, and it goes like this. Blue light is true light, conquering even the blackness of night, lighting my footsteps from up on the wall, leading me, leading me onwards to Gaul. I still get that stuck in my head, even if I can't remember all the words all the time. And because of it, my childhood brain decided very firmly that blue was good and red, purple, and green were bad. You probably noticed this has changed, and I actually really love green now, but I still absolutely cannot allow any color but blue to be my favorite. Another book that I can't dissociate from my growing up is The Castle in the Attic by Elizabeth Winthrop. Basically, Housekeeper Lady is moving back home to England because Boy is 10 now and old enough to be home alone after school, and she wants to be with her family. She gives Boy, named William, a super cool toy castle with working drawbridge and even a lone silver knight. There's a legend about the silver knight, that someday he'll come to life and reclaim his kingdom. But he never did that for the Housekeeper Lady or for her brother. But then he meets William. Castle in the Attic is short and wonderful, and there's a castle, and a knight, and William does gymnastics, and spoilers, his tumbling skills save the kingdom. Clearly, my dream of wanting to be awesome at tumbling and gymnastics and stunts stems from all the way back when I was but a tyke, because that is totally the most memorable theme for me. I'd actually pulled a bunch more books off my shelves to talk about, but given time constraints, I'll stick with these two. Perhaps at a later date, I will present Bex's very favorite childhood book, Part 2. Erin, I will see you on Monday.